Uh, hi there, Steve Kaufman here. Um, hopefully I have my volume uh, adjusted better today so that, uh, that the sound quality will be better than the last uh, video. Um, I was asked to do a video in French. I think I'll do one. I should do some more videos in different languages. Uh, but today though, I want to focus on uh, language strategies because I want to continue talking a bit about the strategy that I had, five days to fluency in Czech. Uh, you will see that I've put up a video where, uh, which I've extracted from a conversation that I had with a Czech tutor. I'm going to try to speak Czech once or twice a week so that I don't lose it. I went more than a month after leaving Prague without speaking Czech, which didn't help. Uh, I'm also going to try to speak once or twice a week in Russian so I don't mess up my Russian. And I also continue listening and reading to uh, Czech and Russian. But I wanted to talk about overall strategy. So I had a strategy. I called it five days to fluency. I put most of my effort into passive learning, so to speak. In other words, listening and reading and building up my ability to understand, building up my vocabulary. And then in a final spurt with a couple of months to go, I stepped up my speaking, got it up to about five hours a week. And then while in Prague, spoke seven or eight hours a day. And yet I didn't become fluent. I didn't become fluent because I, I don't speak smoothly. I, I, and as I watch myself in the video that you'll see, uh, or you may have seen, uh, I, I hear the mistakes that I'm making. I, and these are mistakes that, that uh, I mean, I feel if I lived there for three months, I think with the solid base that I have in my vocabulary and my ability to understand, I could become fluent. But in five days, I can't become fluent with all due respect to Dr. Huliganov who suggested that I could activate my passive vocabulary in five days. I, that's not the case. Because fluency requires, it's, it's uh, like Gavrit Svobodna, as they say in Russian, you speak freely, you speak without effort. I uh, don't speak effortlessly. Uh, so it, I think in order to be able to speak effortlessly, freely, you have to speak a lot. Now, so what's the strategy? Some people have the strategy of wanting to speak from the beginning. And uh, so then they are um, put their you know emphasis and focus on speaking, and uh, and that's one strategy. Uh, but it's not my strategy. I'm sticking with my strategy, and my strategy is to put the the emphasis on getting to where you can understand the language, and building up your vocabulary. And once you have that base, then it becomes quite easy, in my view, to. Uh, learn to speak fluently, but you still have to speak a lot then. Once you have this arsenal of words, once you understand what's happening, then you got to work on speaking. Now, I often hear people here, uh, say immigrants, uh, especially because I have a lot of contact with the Chinese immigrant community, they'll say, ah, yes, but we Chinese, we read well, uh, but we can't speak well. So then I say, well, how many of you have read a novel? Do you read for pleasure? Do you read uh, and of course, many, most of them don't. Uh, I remember uh, meeting a couple, a uh, Swedish couple, friends of mine, we were in France, and then this couple, they're both great Francophiles. They like going to France, and they speak French quite well, uh, it's, or so it appears. And so I gave them a gift of an audiobook of French literature. They couldn't understand the audiobook. So, um, I don't know, I feel personally, my strategy. I mean, their French is good enough in a restaurant, uh, but if they were to get involved in a serious discussion with someone, they wouldn't understand very well. They have trouble understanding movies. They have trouble understanding audiobooks. They probably don't read a lot in French for pleasure. But their approach, their knowledge of French serves their purpose. Uh, but it's not what I would choose to do. Uh, I would rather have a sufficient vocabulary so that I can read books, books of interest, and so that I can understand what I hear. I can listen now to uh, Czech radio, I can listen to Eka Moskvi, I can read books, I can watch movies, and enjoy it. And even though I don't speak very well, I know that if I were put in a situation where I had to speak, I would improve quite quickly. And I saw it in Prague, my speaking ability improved, although I didn't become fluent, and the same when I visited 
Russia and St. Petersburg and Moscow, my Russian improved. And then of course it fell off, but the base is there so that if I go back and once again, I'm in a situation where I have to speak a lot, I can very quickly, you know, improve. And each time I do that, I get better and better. Uh, so, so, but what, what should be, you know, for most people, what should be the strategy? Well, it depends again on what people want to do. But I have a, a very good friend who's 83 and he's been studying Spanish. And uh, I guess his spoken Spanish isn't great, but he can read uh, Latin American literature. And uh, I mean, he lives in Vancouver. How many days of the year does he speak Spanish? Not very often. However, he derives a great deal of pleasure from being able to read in Spanish. So to me, the amount of time and effort that we put into developing this, what seems to be a passive capability in the language is by no means time wasted because developing those passive abilities gives us something that we can actually use when we live away from the language. We can watch movies and enjoy them. We can listen to radio via the internet. We can read and we can enjoy the language. And in doing that, we are always getting better. But if you put all of your emphasis on being, on being able to speak right away and you don't build up this solid base in terms of comprehension skills and in terms of vocabulary, then while you may be able to speak, what you'll be able to say and what you will understand uh, you know, coming back from native speakers will be quite limited. And so then you have to, have to ask yourself, uh, you know, am I in a situation where I need to speak Spanish a lot? Um, you know, if it's just for the two weeks that you go to Mexico, then yeah, you're probably quite happy with having a very um, superficial capability in the language. Uh, however, uh, yeah, I guess the strategy comes back to what your goals are. Uh, to me, that's not a satisfactory goal. Uh, you know, to be able to say that you speak the language, it's not sufficient to be able to uh, uh, trot off a few phrases. Uh, to be able to speak the language, I think you have to be able to engage with people, speak freely, which I don't yet do in, in Czech, and I don't really think I do it in Russian either. Uh, but you have to be able to understand. And so I would be quite comfortable and, and the same is true with my Portuguese. I never speak Portuguese. I speak Portuguese very poorly, but I understand. So if someone at Link, as, as, as recently uh, as Diego, a uh, member at Link, sent me a, a, a one hour uh, wonderful TV program video on the Brazilian economy. So I can watch this and I can understand it all and I enjoy it. Uh, so these are ways in which I can enjoy my, my Portuguese here. Now, if I went out and had an evening with a bunch of Brazilians here locally, or with some Russians, or with some Czechs, I would have a very good under, uh, you know, chance of understanding what they're talking about. And I can chime in, and I'll get better as the evening wears on, or uh, what usually happens is you get better and then you get worse. You get better at first, you're sort of carried on by some kind of adrenaline, adrenaline and then all of a sudden fatigue sets in and you start to have more difficulty. Uh, but if I were all of a sudden, uh, to live for a month or two in Brazil, a month or two in Czech Republic, a month or two in Russia, I know, I'm totally confident that I would become genuinely fluent in the language. So what, where I prefer to invest my time is again in building up my comprehension, building up my um, vocabulary and enjoying the language immensely. And, and this is one of the dilemmas right now. I want to start into Korean. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's so difficult to tear myself away from the languages that I'm enjoying where I can actually engage with meaningful and interesting content. Uh, and I've got to go back to Korea now where I'm dealing with uh, relatively uninteresting beginner content. And I have to, you know, try to build up my, my comprehension in Korean to where I can actually get at things that are interesting. Uh, and that's sort of the difficult period. And it's difficult to tear yourself away from the uh, existing relationships that you have with these other, with these other languages. So again, speaking of strategy, uh, I'm going to focus on the, uh, you know, who is she and uh, eating out those two simple uh, stories we have at Link. And I'm going to listen to them over and over and over again, along with some other material that I've found uh, where it's basic and simple. I'm going to listen over and over and over again until I get enough of a toehold that I can start attacking 
you know, authentic material. And I think it'll take me six months to get to where I can understand, you know, adult material uh, comfortably. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, as a part of my strategy, I hope to go to Korea and spend uh, a week or two, which will, you know, propel me forward. Plus, it'll also be a goal that will help keeping, keep me on track. But I don't think, realistically, that I'll end up being a fluent speaker of Korean after just a week or so there. So, just to update you on five days to fluency, the experiment, um, and what I consider to be the language learning strategy that works for me. Now, it may be different for other people. It undoubtedly is. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.